Number 10, solve the compound inequality and graph it. So the first thing we're going to do is add 7 to all parts. So we have 10 is less than 5p is less than or equal to 25. Then divide everything by 5, you'll get 2 is less than p is less than or equal to 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 5p divided by p is p, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. So now we got to graph them. So we have 2 is less than p is less than or equal to 5. Now to graph it, we see it's going to be all the values of p between 2 and 5. And looking at the endpoints, one of those has a line under it and the other doesn't. So the one without a line under it is going to be an open circle. So open circle at 2 and closed circle at 5. So let's see which of these it could be. So closed circle at 5 could either be A or D. We have an open circle at 2 because of that inequality. So it has to be A because 2 has a closed circle on it on D. So the answer would be A. Number 11, solve the inequality and graph the solutions. We have two separate inequalities, so we just solve them both. Starting with the one on the left, add 4 to both sides. You'll get 4t is less than or equal to negative 16. Divide both sides by 4. You'll get t is less than or equal to negative 4. Now let's solve the second one. Subtract 2 on both sides. You'll get 3t is greater than or equal to 12. Divide both sides by 3, and you'll have t is greater than or equal to 4. So your answer is t is less than or equal to negative 4, or t is greater than or equal to 4. So now let's type it in and graph it. Looking at our choices, it's going to be f. So choose f. And now we're going to graph it. Since there is a line under both inequalities, it has to be two closed circles. So that means it's either going to be C or D. Now, seeing as we got negative 4 and 4, we'll have negative 4 and 4 will have to be C. D has negative 3 and 3. So your answer is going to be C for your graph. Number 12 is having you write this interval as an inequality, and then graph them. So let's do that. So first, we got to remember that when we have parentheses, we are going to use a less than without the line under it, so not an equal to, and we use brackets when it is equal to. So knowing as these are both brackets, we're going to use less thans or equal tos. So negative 4 and 7 are the endpoints and then put in our less than or equal to's with dx in the middle. So this will be our inequality. So let's type it in and then graph it. So we have negative 4 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 7. Now our graph, since they're both equal to's, are going to be two closed circles. So that means it has to be b. Everything else has at least one open circle. So that's the answer. Number 13 is having us write this inequality in interval notation and then graphing it. So again, remember, no equal to means you use parentheses, and equal to means you use brackets. So our first endpoint, we see we're going infinitely in a negative direction. So our first endpoint is going to be negative infinity. And infinity always has a parenthesis on it. So put a parenthesis for the left. Now our endpoint on the right is negative 3. There is a line under the inequality, so we use a bracket. So that's my interval. So let's type it in and then graph it. So type in negative infinity, comma, negative 3, and then a bracket. Now the graph, we're going to the left starting at negative 3 with a closed circle, so that would have to be b. And that's number 13. Number 14, 
write the inequality in interval notation, and then graph it. So we're going to have two sets of intervals, starting with this one. Remember, parentheses, no equal to, brackets, equal to. So our first endpoint here, we're going to the left infinitely. So we have negative infinity, which means we put a parenthesis on that. Comma, and then negative 4. And we have a line under the inequality. So that means you put a bracket. And that's the first interval. Right? Or, and then we look at the second inequality. So our endpoint first is going to be 3, because we're starting at 3 and going to the right. So there is no line under the inequality, so it's 3 with a parenthesis. Comma, we're going to the right infinitely, so we put infinity, a positive, since it's a positive direction, and there's always a parenthesis on the infinity. So that's going to be our interval. So let's type it in and then graph it. So my out of my choices is going to be D. Now a little hint on this one. Notice as for interval notation, there's OR here. Only one of those has an OR on it, so even if you have no clue how to do interval notation, just choose the one with the OR and you won't go wrong. Now let's graph it. So our endpoints, our starting points are at negative 4 and 3. Notice there's going to be a closed circle at negative 4 because of the bracket and an open one at 3. That means my answer has to be C. And that's number 14. Number 15. Solve the inequality and then write the set in interval notation. So what we do first is subtract everything by 2, which will give us negative 1 is less than x, is less than or equal to 2. So now let's put this in interval notation. So parenthesis, no equal to, bracket with the equal to. So our endpoint first on the left is going to be negative 1. There is no equal to on the inequality, so that means you're going to put a parenthesis. Now I put a comma, and then 2 is the endpoint on the right. There is a line on the inequality here, so put a bracket at the end, and then that's the answer of it in interval notation. And that's number 15. Skipping to 17, we're solving the inequality. So first we're going to add 12 to both sides, and we'll get 15 is greater than 5w. Divide both sides by 5 we'll get 3 is greater than w. we got to write the w on the left. So write the w on the left and the 3 on the right. And when we do that, we switch directions of the inequality. So your answer for 17 is w is less than 3. Number 18, we're solving the inequality. So start by distributing this 2 in the parentheses. And then our like terms, we got to combine. So 2x plus 2x is 4x then minus 16 is greater than or equal to negative 4. Add 16 to both sides, you'll get 4x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide both sides by 4, and you'll get x is greater than or equal to 3. And that's the answer for number 18. The 21, we're solving the inequality and then graphing the solution. So we start by distributing the 5. We'll get 5x minus 35 over here, and then just rewrite to 5x minus 5. Then subtract 5x from both sides, you'll get negative 5 is less than negative 35. Now negative 5 is not less than negative 35, so your answer is going to be no solution for number 21. So now let's graph it. So I'm going to choose no solution. And then my graph is going to be the one where there are no solutions on it, because there is no solution, so D. And then that's my answer for number 21. Going to number 23. Your cell phone plan costs $29.99 per month plus 15 cents for each text message you send or receive. You have at most $36 to spend on your cell phone bill. What is the maximum number of text messages that you can send or receive next month? First, since we are looking for the maximum number of text messages, that's what we're going to make x. That's our missing value that we're trying to find. So now, since we know that's x, we can write the rest of the equation. So we have $29.99 per month plus 15 cents for each test message. So we'll have $29.99 plus 0.15x. x is the number of text messages. 
is less than or equal to 36. At most means you could spend that much or less, but no more than that. So that's why it's a less than or equal to. Now we solve the inequality. Subtract 29.99 on both sides. You'll get 0.15x is less than or equal to 6.01. Divide 0.15 on both sides and you'll get x will be less than or equal to 40. Because when we divide, we get a decimal. We cannot round up text messages because if we send 41, that means we'll be spending over $36. So we have to round down to 40 since that would be the most we can spend without going over. So your answer would be 40 text messages. Number 24. To find a variable and write an inequality to model the given situation. So we have a law clerk has earned more than $30,000 since being hired. Now, S is going to be the salary has to be more than $30,000. So more than means just greater than. It's not going to be greater than or equal to because it doesn't say more than or equal to 30000 It just says more than. So your answer is going to be A. For number 24. 25, we're doing the same thing, but instead we're told the restaurant can seat at most 168 people. Now, at most means I can have 168 people, I can have less than 168 people, but I can't have more than that. So that means my inequality is less than or equal to. So since P is the capacity of the restaurant, I could seat less than 168 or equal to 168, but not more than. So less than or equal to. So A is my choice. And that's number 25.